into the future. I want us one more time as you make your way back to your seats to just love on him just for another moment. I want you to love on him. He's such a great God. Oh, my Lord. Lord, you are so awesome. Come on, let's love on him. That's all right. Lift up the name of Jesus just for a few moments. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I stand up here today unworthy to be before you in this position. And it's his righteousness, his mercy, and his grace. When you see me, you don't see me. You see the mercy of God. You see the grace of God. And likewise, when I look at you, <laughs> I see the mercy of God. I see the grace of God. And I thank him today for his mercy. And that he has never failed, as they sang, and he never will. He's never fallen short. <laughs> he's always been over the top. He was, That song, he's more than enough. He has more than enough, and he is more than enough. Do you believe that today? Amen. You may be seated this morning. As we can, and by the way, thank you so much, praise team, for blessing us today, leading us in worship, amen. As we continue our series titled Rooted, um, for some of you it's Rooted, um, you can either enunciate the T or not, depends on what part of the U.S. you're from, so for those of us on the Rooted side, somebody say amen, on the Rooted side, say amen, all right, we got, we got both sides here, that's good. Let's do a quick review of the past two weeks. The first thing we covered was that if someone truly wants to be properly and successfully rooted in Jesus Christ, they must be rooted and grounded in love. Yes, because why? Because love conquers all things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your and. I checked that off, got that one. Love your neighbor as yourself, check. Love your enemies. Oops, why'd you have to go there? Love those who despitefully use you. Oh, I'm, I'm still working on that check on that one right there. Oh, yes, in fact, the word makes it clear that you can have all kinds of gifts but if you have not love, those gifts mean absolutely nothing. Then last Sunday, we talked about growing. We talked about how important it is to pray in order to grow. Prayer is what brings growth in our relationship with Jesus Christ like nothing else does. And no matter how much I do for Christ, which is good. It's good that I do things for him and his kingdom. That's fine and well, but it will never properly substitute and make up for the lack of prayer and relationship that I should have with the Lord. We talked about five things that a person can be involved with or do in order to experience instant growth. Those things were small groups. The second one was coming to church Faithfully and not just in body but in mind too. Punch a neighbor and say, hey, are you here in mind? <laughs> Amen. They might be here in their body, but that doesn't mean they're here in their mind. Come on here with your mind as well. Number four, prayer. Number five, worship. Or number three, prayer. Number four, worship. And number five, Home Bible studies. These are things we can do to enrich and grow in Christ. If you make room for all of these daily and weekly, 
okay, some of them are daily and some of them are weekly, you will grow in Christ exponentially. And so here we are today. So what next, Pastor? We got to love, we got to grow. Where are we at now? Well, as you continue therein to grow and to become a strong, healthy, mature Christian, you will, as everyone does, pick up things that are not necessary. Or you will add things that look like they would be great for your life at that time, only to find that particular branch of your life is sucking you dry, demanding way too much of your time and effort, and guess how much fruit is on that one branch? None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. So you've invested so much and you've grown in Christ, but you've come to this place to where you've allowed things to become a part of your life that you thought were important. And so today, we're going to talk about a part of growing in Christ that is painful but promising. Yeah, this particular part of growing deals with that wonderful, healthy branch that you have nurtured and become so dependent on that has been there for a long time so that you could lean on it when you're tired. However, after much time of growing, it has become a deficit more than it has become an asset to you. So now you find yourself having nurtured and becoming so connected to and so dependent on an area in your life that is sucking you dry. And the worst part is it's barren. It's not producing any fruit. That branch is not producing fruit. After all the time that you have spent in this area of your life on this branch, keeping it nurtured, keeping it strong, yet there is no fruit for your labor. So what do I do? What next? Well, today I want to introduce to you the natural part of an organic relationship with God, and that is this. The process of pruning. However, today with God's help, I'm going to preach to you for the next few moments the purpose of pruning. The purpose of pruning. Just as a plant is healthier after pruning and has revitalized growth, so a Christian experiences growth when unhealthy areas of their lives are trimmed and thinned up. Though this process can be painful in the moment, the outcome is divine and it is beautiful. Now, as a follower of Jesus, we must, we must see God's work in our lives as something that has our best in mind and his glory at stake. God is the divine gardener. Somebody say, God is the divine gardener. And he has our spiritual growth as his ultimate goal. God wants you to grow. God does not want you to wither. He does not want you to die. He wants you to grow and flourish and be fruitful. Somebody say amen. God will use anything in our lives to shape us into the people that he wants us to be. Now, if there is something in our lives that is unhealthy for us, God will want to prune it. Uh oh! If there is something in our lives that is good but not the best, God will want to prune it. Jesus is the source of all life, and every person must be careful to remain connected to him, to grow deep roots that will sustain us through anything we will face in life. We must receive Acceptance, guidance, and love as a branch receives from the vine. We must make a conscious decision to welcome God's pruning in our lives. Lord, I welcome the journey. I welcome you into my life. I welcome a daily prayer life. I want a daily prayer life. Lord, I want to grow in you. I want to grow in my love and I know that if I don't pray, I'll never understand. Lord, so help me to grow in my prayer and in my love for you and for others, even the people that are my enemies. Help me to grow. That's important. And Lord, I want to grow, I want to continue to grow in your word. So I'm putting all these things in my life. And Lord, uh, I also want to grow enough 
that if you see something in my life or if you see something that I have invested in that is wasting my time and that is not being productive for your kingdom, I give you permission to reveal it to me so that it can be cut off. We must make a conscious decision to welcome God's pruning. God is actively seeking out areas in our lives that he would like to effectively change. Do you believe that? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our deepest desire today is to grow in our relationship in you. Please search our hearts and know our minds and remove those things that will cause us harm, God. May your divine work in our lives cause us to be faithful followers of you. May our roots, Lord, grow deep into your love and give us a solid foundation for our lives. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. So, I just want to say that pruning is defined as this, to trim by cutting away the dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. It's not always the dead ones that you cut off, though, okay? Like many aspects of our faith journey, pruning isn't always easy. In fact, most of the time, it's not. But it is necessary in order for healthy new growth to occur. To frame our time today, I want to share with you some words found in John chapter 15 and verse 1. And I'm going to read this to you beginning with verse 1 and go through verse 5, which is my text today. John chapter 15, verse 1. And it says this, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman or the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. You got that? While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do some things. Most things. Nothing. I got to tell you today, we need him. We need him in everything we do. Two things are communicated in this verse, in these verses here, and I want to I want to just the first verse alone. First, Jesus makes it clear that he is the vine. He wants us to understand that there is no life separated from him. Apart from him, there is no life. People who do not have Jesus, people who are not engrafted in the vine, they have no life. Just as all the nutrients needed for a plant to grow um, and, and travel through the roots to the limbs by the trunk stem, so all, every one of us, need for life. We need that for our life. For, to live life to the fullest, it only comes through Jesus Christ. He is our source. The second thing we find is the one who is responsible for cultivating the growth in the lives of the people of God. There is no other being who is more qualified to oversee the growth process than the one who is the author of life in the first place. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is a divine gardener, and he is an expert at facilitating growth. These two things are incredibly important to keep in mind as we talk about pruning today. It's crucial to remember who is behind it all and that God is Die, he is the divine gardener and has the bigger picture in mind. 
Romans 8, 28 says this, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Think back to our definition of pruning. What was it? To trim, right? A tree, a shrub, or a bush. By cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. One of the main jobs of a gardener is to remove dead, fruitless, or broken limbs from a plant. Now, often a plant will be hindered by a dead portion of its branches because that dead portion gets in the way. Sometimes a plant will waste energy and nutrients to help branches that don't produce any fruit. I'm just curious, how many people in here are involved in plants or or a garden, and you understand uh, the importance of pruning, and you've pruned before yourself. Can I see your hands? All right, we got quite a few people. In our lives, we often have similar areas that are hindrances to us. So let's spiritualize this. It may be sin that needs to be removed. It might be. It may be discipline in our lives that we need to accept. It may even be something good in our lives that is distracting us from something great. The gardener will prune these things that we might have a better opportunity to grow because he doesn't want you to stay where you're at. He wants you to keep growing and maturing and becoming more like him. If the human who is earthly, created, the one who was created, if he is the created gardener and he's interested in fruitfulness and healthy growth, can you imagine how much more the divine heavenly gardener, our creator, the in, is, is so interested in the same thing for us? If we are interested in our plants producing fruit and vegetables for us, how much more is our Heavenly Father interested in us producing and being successful? When talking about pruning, when talking about pruning, less can truly be more. The pruning that God does in our lives is not because he is angry. That's God. God, God cut that. He, 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 that hurt. No, no, no. It's not because he's angry. God must be mad at me. God is angry at me. No, you would know if he was angry at you. God is angry with us and wants to punish us. Actually, it's quite the opposite According to Hebrews, there is a race that has been marked out for us that results in a heavenly prize. In order to run this race, well, we'll, we'll we're going to have to remove those things that will disqualify us or hinder us from reaching the finish line. Hebrews 12 and 1 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin some things aren't sin but it's just a weight it's a good thing but it's keeping me from going forward it's just a weight it's not a sin it's just something that's draining me it's something that's pulling me away from things that I should be doing I gotta lay that thing aside why because I gotta go across the finish line and I don't wanna go across barely I wanna go across confidently Anybody else want to do that? Stand to your feet if you want to finish strong. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. You may be seated. This is not an easy and comfortable process, y'all. It's not. But in the end, as the things are removed that aren't healthy for us, we find something more from life. That could not have been found without the pruning. Without the pruning, there are things that would never be found in your journey. And in your journey of growing with God, have you ever, have to, have you ever had to give something up that you knew was draining you? Hindering your growth in Christ? Keeping you from being focused on the things that really matter? Have you ever had that happen? Yeah. And you knew, 
if I just cut this one thing, if I just stop doing this, if I just stop going here, if I just stop, you know, being in this environment, I know I will immediately begin to grow in Christ. This is what's holding. Have you ever had that? That's when the pruning needs to take place. That's when you need to say, okay, God, I'm not going to fight this. This is what's been holding. It could be a, a, a sinful addiction that's holding you back. It could be something that's not even sin, but something that's just wasting your time that's holding you back. And God has revealed it to you. Now it's your decision. Now wait a second because I gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and bring this to you. you got to remember this. The tree does not prune itself. The tree does not take out scissors on, its, on one of its other healthy limbs and go and cut itself up. No. It's the gardener. Can I tell you, God is such a gentleman. He does not prune you until you give him permission. He will let you keep growing because we have the power of choice. If God pruned you without your permission, he would be violating the very thing that makes us different than all of his other creations. So we have the power of choice. Here's the way it works. You say, God, I need this out of my life. I know it's not right and it's holding me back. And God comes in and he helps you and he cuts that and he prunes you. Why? Because he is the master gardener. He is the one that does the work. If you will acknowledge that it needs to be removed, if you will acknowledge that it is a problem, if you will acknowledge that it is holding you back, Healthy connection to the vine will produce good fruit. I want to produce good fruit. As Christians, our strength comes by living in connection with Jesus Christ. Listen, Galatians, and I love this verse, these two verses, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. They're so known. I mean, most people can quote them. And it speaks about the nine fruit of the Spirit. And it should be a part of our lives. And, and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. I want you to think for a moment about the fruit listed there in, in Galatians. These are areas that most every believer has some desire to grow in. You want to grow in those nine areas. The only way these fruit are able to grow day to day in our lives is for us to remain connected to Jesus through full surrender, through full obedience, and unwavering wavering faithfulness. Lord, I'm going to be faithful to you no matter what. I'm not missing church. I don't care what happens. I'm going to be here because you said that I am not to forsake the assembling of myself with God's people. I'm going to be here because you made it clear that it's the foolishness of preaching that will save me. And I need a Savior. i got to hear the word of God preached. And how shall they hear without a preacher? You're here because you need the preached word of God. I love to teach. Some people said, I, we, a while back we had some visitors come. And, and God bless all of our wonderful guests. We had some visitors come and they were so kind, wonderful people. And it got back to me that they had asked, uh, one of them asked, why does he got to scream so much? <laughs> yeah, it kind of set me back for a minute. And I thought, well, why? Why do I scream so much? Maybe next, okay, let's do this. Next Sunday, I'm going to talk out my message. Deal? Y'all won't be here? <laughs> Can I tell you there is a vast difference between teaching and preaching? I love to teach. I teach every Tuesday night in my home. I teach every Wednesday night here at the church. Sometimes I preach on Wednesday nights. I sneak a preach on Wednesday nights every now and then. 
but it is the passionate. Ministers, listen to me. Thank you for your teaching. I need you to preach. If you're going to preach to lost souls, they need to see a passionate preacher laying it on the line and preaching the gospel like it's your last chance to preach. This is my last opportunity to preach this gospel. It could be. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you know with all of my heart, I believe this. I love it. And I'm going to give it to you the way that it was given to me. Okay, I'll make a deal. I'll wrap my message next Sunday. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The only way that these fruit are able to grow is that we stay connected. Please don't let your prayer life fall apart. Because when your prayer life falls apart, your attendance goes down the drain. You don't feel your need to be at church when you ain't praying. And guess what? Pastor knows. Now I ain't going to call you and say, where's your prayer life, son? You ain't been to church in three weeks. I'm not going to do that. Well, unless the Lord tells me to. I've done it before. Amen. You can't be in relationship with God. You can't have a good, solid relationship walking with God and talking with God and not be faithful to God. It doesn't work that way. Faithfulness starts with relationship. Say that with me. Faithfulness starts with relationship. And then here's what happens. As you grow in Him, and as you mature and you become this fruitful plant for Christ, this tree that is just growing beside the rivers of living water, as that happens, you begin to see certain branches on your tree that are not producing any fruit. And because you have a relationship, listen, because you have a relationship with him and you trust him and you talk to him daily, it's no big deal for you to say, God, I know this is going to hurt, but I have really become dependent on this thing in my life. And it's really, really, it's, it's really wasting, wasting my time. It's holding me back. Lord, I'm ready for you to cut that off. Now, it would be nice if God would just cut that thing out of our life. And it would, but we know that we, got, we play a big role in the pruning process, right? You know you play a big role in the pruning process. And the purpose of pruning, and I'm closing right now. I'm coming to a conclusion right now. Spiritual growth does not and cannot happen by accident. Let me tell you, you're not going to accidentally grow, wake up one morning and say, Oh, my I feel like the King James Version Bible. I think I've even got a little NIV in me too. And how about the message? Wow. Thus thee thou. Holy cow. That was for all my friends in India. Amen. Praise God. Listen. This is very important. You'll get that later. (laughs) My friend John will get that. He's probably watching right now from India. So, I hear people whispering. (laughs) Here's the thing. I have got to be willing to let him cut the things out of my life that are stopping me from growing. The Christian life is a process that we enter into when the seed of the gospel is planted. What what is the gospel? How do, Pastor, can you back up for a moment? You're talking about this pruning. I need to get in. I need to be saved. Pastor, I need to get connected to the vine. How do I do that? Thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now cuz you that is the that is the gospel. If I don't preach the gospel, I could preach all kinds of other stuff. But if we don't preach the gospel, ain't nobody going to be getting saved. It's the preaching of the gospel that's saved. (laughs) 
And it's a beautiful gospel. You want to join today? You want to join? Not the church. Yeah, you, I, we, we want you to join the church if you're looking for a church. But if you want to join the body, the body of Christ, if you want to be born into the body, it's a beautiful, beautiful plan. And there's only one plan. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus, how do we get in? Well, first of all, you got to repent. You got to believe that I can save you. Okay, Lord, I believe. That's the first thing is faith. Want to be, want to be born in the body? Just believe that he is. And that he is able to save you. And once you get to that point, you're here today. You already believe in him. If you didn't believe in him, you wouldn't be here today. Those of you who are watching, you're still watching because you believe that he is able. That he's able to help you. That he's able to save you. That he's able to deliver you. That he's able to heal you. You believe that, don't you? And so, and so we find a beautiful plan. Repent after you've believed. You're going to realize, God, you're perfect. I believe in my creator, the one who is perfect in all of his ways. Yet I am sinful in all of my ways. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. I was tempted in all points, and I sinned every time. I need a, I need a Savior that was able to conquer sin. That's him. That's Jesus. <laughs> And guess what? He's here today to forgive you of all of your sins. This is the gospel. This is the one. The, the, this is the message that will save you, sir, ma'am. You don't need to hear anything else. This is what you need to hear today if you want salvation. And then once you've repented of all your sins and you said, "God, I'm sorry," and Lord, I, I not only am I sorry, but Lord, I don't want to go back that direction. I'm done. Once you're done with that, guess what? The beautiful thing is then you close that out, close that part out by getting forgiveness of your sins, by getting in the water and being baptized in the name of your Savior, in the name of the one who died on the cross for you, in the name of the one who wore a crown of thorns, his hands and feet were nailed to that cross, the one whose side was pierced, who took 39 stripes for you, who bled so that he took the stripes so that you could be healed. That's the one. That's the one that you're going to be buried in his name. And when you come up out of the water, guess what the Bible says? All of your sins are washed away. In other words, they're forgiven. Once your sins are forgiven, he's right there to fill you with his spirit. And that's the plan. Is that not beautiful? Today in this place, if you want to make sure that you're saved, I'm going to give you the four-step plan. It's this simple. Believe, repent, be baptized in his name, and be filled with his spirit. If you will follow through with that, if you don't understand all that, please come forward today when we have the altar call, and we will help explain that to you, and we will pray that God will lead you through that today. You don't have to wait another second to join the body of Christ. You can join the body of man. You can join the body of Christ right now, today. Does anybody believe that? For those that have joined the body, would you stand with me? And for those that want to join the body, would you stand with me? Everybody stand together. To grow in faith takes intentional effort, fierce determination, and the unquenchable grace of God. It is true that God loves us just as we are. Hear me. He loves you just as, I've heard people say, oh, the, the Lord loves me as I am. Yes, He does. He loves you as you are. But He loves you more than that. <laughs> it's equally true that He loves you enough to not let you stay the way you are. Are there areas in the past that you now recognize God pruned away or in order for you to be healthy, in order for you to have new growth? Can you look back and see where you allowed God to work on you in an area? And when you, when, and when you, when you gave him that permission, 
Some of you are still having a hard time getting wrapping your mind around giving God permission. Let me tell you, He will not go against your human will. When you surrender your human will to Him, that's when He can take over your life. He will not any other way. Have you? Can you look back and say, oh, I remember when God took that off of me. I'm so glad that I surrendered that to Him. You remember that? Okay. So are there also areas in your past that you look at and say, ooh, that's something I've let stay on and it's a dead branch now. You know what He did with the dead branches? He didn't prune them. He cut them off. There's some things that God just wants to get completely rid of, the evidence that it was ever there. Today, there's some things that some people have, have allowed some dead branches to stay on your life. It's time to get those cut off. What are some specific areas of your life that could use some pruning to allow for healthy growth to happen? What are some areas that need to be completely chopped off for the sake of future growth? You can trust today that God knows what He's doing. And even though the process of pruning can be painful, it will be also fruitful in the hands of our divine Savior. I'm going to tell you two things and I'm done. First of all, if there's an area in which you are bearing fruit, I want you to hear this. If there's an area in which you are bearing fruit, God is more likely to prune in that area so that you can be even more fruitful. You already know, those of you that are gardeners, you know. I go to the places that are producing fruit and I prune those because they're going to produce more fruit if I will. This means that you will certainly encounter difficulty, Brother Matters. You will will encounter challenges. You will encounter difficulties. But let him prune you. Because when he does, it's only going to help you produce more. Oh, that hurt. I cut. Look, I'm I'm sure it's like it's less now. Less is more. When God does the pruning. Because more is coming. Much more is coming. If you didn't prune that, if you didn't prune that branch, the eventually the growth would stop completely. Secondly, and I close with this, when you do experience this pruning, take it as a sign that God is indeed caring for you and taking an action, active role in your growth. That should be extremely encouraging to everybody in this place. Do not let the enemy whisper lies in your ear about failures. Thank God that he is pruning you. Thank God that you see your need to be pruned enough to give God permission to work on you and cut some things off. The scripture refers to a circumcision that is made without hands. It's a circumcision of the heart. It's the removal of unnecessary things that have become more of a burden than they have a blessing. You know, this circumcision of the heart is just another way to express the concept of pruning. Cutting away that which has or will become an unnecessary weight that distracts us from our one true mission. And that is to bear fruit. What needs to be cut off today in your life? What needs to be pruned out of your life today? Come on, come on, think about this for real. This is that moment. I probably won't preach on this particular subject for a long time. So do yourself and do God a favor today. Mostly yourself. Do yourself a favor and really examine your heart and say, where do I need to be pruned? What area of my life is hindering me from growing? It's keeping you from being faithful to God's house. Cut it off! It's distracting your prayer life. Cut it off! It's draining your energy to where you can't even imagine the idea of joining a small group with your crazy schedule because you don't have time or worse yet you don't see the benefit cut it off you need to grow and you gotta see where you can grow and you gotta be willing to cut off the hindrances to your growth it's time to cut off that thing 
that has dried you up so bad that when you come to church, you can't even feel free to worship. Cut that thing off. You come to worship and say, what's wrong with me? I can't feel anything. Everybody's worshiping. People are crying and people are speaking in tongues. And the church is going up in a, in a, in a holy smoke. Why can't I feel anything? There's some things you need to cut What's hindering you? What's stopping you from truly growing in Jesus? And what in the world is worth holding on to that would hinder you? What is worth holding on to? There are some of you that are called to ministry in this place today. And you've looked at it and you've thought about it and you've prayed about it. And, you, <laughs> and you're like, eh. I think I'm going to just be a good, faithful saint, back pastor up. And God says, no, no, you're not going to be happy until you fulfill my ultimate call. There is no secondary calling from God. There is no permissive will of God. I don't believe in that. Well, God's second will for your life. I'm not computing that. God has one plan. One, one blueprint for your life. One blueprint. My question is, is there anything in your life that's hindering you from continuing on the journey of fulfilling the blueprint of your life? And if it is, cut it. Let him. Lord, I give you permission. You're my gardener. Cut that thing off. Help me, Jesus. I don't want to be held back anymore. Ah, I know we've already had a powerful move of God pre, pre-preaching before the preaching started we had a powerful move of God God touched and moved and blessed a lot of people and I know it's always difficult it puts it makes it difficult for me or any preacher that has to get up after a powerful move of God because we preach for response we preach not because we don't want you to respond to us. We want you to respond to the Word of God. So in this place, maybe you did get a good touch. I'm so glad you did. But this Word is my, maybe even those of you that got a touch has helped some of you see, oh, there's some things I need to get rid of that's holding me back, that's holding me down. Some old dead branches, some living branches that are just not bearing any fruit. I got to get rid of So in this place, some people in this house right now, you know whether you need salvation, which is the greatest thing if you need salvation. This, the greatest thing that could happen today is somebody could join the body of Christ and be born into the kingdom. That's the greatest thing. But second to that is for those that are on this journey. And you are, you know this message has really, really, really been for you. You know you got some some branches that have got to be dealt with. Come, come right now, quickly. Come, come, come real quick. Got some branches, Pastor. I got some stuff. I got some. I got some habits. I'm not seeing. I just got some things that are weighing me down. I got some crazy excuses for why I miss church. I got some crazy excuses as to why I would never have time for a Bible study midweek. I've got. I got some crazy excuses why I don't come to church on Wednesday nights. Why? Because I got some I got some branches that need to be cut off. I got some stuff that needs to be pruned. I got some stuff that 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 is weighing me down. It's not it's not producing any fruit whatsoever, Pastor. I I, I gotta lay this down. I'm tired. I'm tired of feeding something that is getting me nowhere. And that's, oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost to tell you. And that's why you're frustrated because you're not seeing any fruit of your labor. It's because you are allowing things to stay on you and you're entertaining things that are not producing any fruit and it's just wasting your time. Today in this place, I must cut off the things ah, that are holding me back. Come on, is there anybody else? Is there anybody else today? Is there anybody else? Come. It's all right. It's okay. I got some things that I need to cut off. And let me just tell you, 
On this pruning process, it's not just things. Sometimes it's people that you need to cut off. I don't mean in a negative way or in a bad way. I don't mean in a way that would come across as, as being mean or rude or rejecting somebody. But people that you know good and well have been hindering you from moving forward in Christ. Come on. Anybody else need some pruning in your life? I'm sure that every single one of us, if we would examine ourselves and be completely open and honest, every one of us have an area in our life that needs to be either removed or pruned. God wants to do both of those things today. If you're here today and you want to be born into the kingdom of God, this is your moment right here, right now. So I'm making an altar call one more time before I call everybody. If you're here today and you know good and well, God, I've got some things that are hindering my worship, things that are hindering my dedication, hindering my attendance, hindering my walk with you, hindering me from fulfilling that perfect will that you called me to. I am coming to this altar 